Kentucky trucker in the building. <laughs> All right, man. Hey, you know we uh, you know we we spoke before, man. You know you was uh, you was in a situation yourself uh, a while back. Uh, I, I see you back in the truck. So I, everything worked out for you. Oh yeah. Yeah, I've been I've been back driving for a year now. After that, it has been a it has been a good minute. You with the same company? No, no. no I stayed with Forward Air for a while. Uh, they were good to me. I I don't have nothing bad to say about them or anything like that. But uh, my wife got her CDL, and I couldn't train her there, so we went to a small company uh, that would allow me to do that, and. Uh, Worked with them for about six or seven months, and uh, then we got another offer, and uh, we took that, and uh, uh, now we're leased on to a different one. All right, that's what's up. Now you you're on an op, right? You you own your own truck, right? Yeah, yes, that's correct. All right, before we touch on a, a lot of things, because we got we got some catching up to do, bro. We we got some catching up, so. Uh, with everything that's going on right now, uh, with trucking, you know, Yellow Freight, the biggest LTL company, just folded up and shuttered its doors and left all of its uh, thousands of drivers out to the pastor. Pastor, <laughs> what's uh, yeah, what, what's what, what's what's going on in the trucking industry, in your opinion, man? I mean, are you good out there, or what, what's going on, man? Put that coffee down. Uh, me and my wife are doing good. I I made the decision to leave LTL Freight. Uh, like I said, the biggest part was because of of uh, you know I needed a place that would allow me to train her because you know she didn't want to work with with anybody else. Uh, she only wanted to work with me and for me to be her trainer. So we had to work out something with the company that would allow us to do that. So I left LTL Freight at Forward Air, and LTL Freight is the same thing that Yellow is. And I noticed after I'd done that, um, I'm still in, in Facebook groups and stuff like that with people uh, who are at Forward Air, and you know, if they just said, like, the LTL Freight just crashed. And a lot of a lot of folks over there that were running team uh, are doing a lot of sitting, and they were trying to move them over to running uh, contract customer freight, uh, but still not enough to to really keep them going. I think FedEx, UPS, Yellow, I think they all took a hit when the when the economy went down and inflation went up and everything, and the price of everything went up. People stopped buying as much as they were. Plus, you know, with COVID coming to an end and everybody not sitting around the house, <laughs> you know, with these with these extra extra money to spend, uh, they weren't they weren't buying as much. But what we done is we end up moving over to a company that hauls uh, reefers. And whenever I was coming over there, I talked to one of the owners and he said, "Look, he said we're doing okay. We have contract freight, and our contract freight, you know, being food, people always got to eat no matter what." And so what I've found is contract uh, frozen and fresh food is is probably the most stable thing right now. But contract, not brokered. So as long as uh, Kentucky Trucker and his wife is doing good, that's all that matters. All right, man, uh, let's uh, move on. Uh, Super Eagle. <laughs> Still a topic. Uh, you touched on that uh, some time ago on your TikTok. Uh, was what, what you did a stint over there? Didn't like it, left it, and um, it's again, it's still a topic of discussion. What's your thoughts on it now? Uh, are are you still uh part of the uh what what is it um um the open lawsuit? The, class action. the open class, lawsuit. Yeah, class, yeah, class, action, class lawsuit. action lawsuit. Yeah. Yeah, they just sent me paperwork. I just filled out more paperwork for that yesterday. Yeah, going. I I don't know exactly what the outcome is going to be, and obviously, I doubt myself going to we're near the money that they they you know screwed us out of. But 
if they take a hit and we get something, uh, that, that, that will at least be something. Um, these guys have got so many authorities that they're running under. I'm seeing new ones all the time. And, uh, I found out that, um, the crash that was down in Florida, the guy was hauling the super ego trailer, but he wasn't under super ego's authority, but the authority he was under had a connection to them, had a partnership with them. And I actually had a lady reach out to me whose daughter got hurt in that crash and was asking me for information about it. They said the guy took the, took the, some of the stuff out, the ELD stuff out and destroyed it, trying to hide it. Uh, they're just a really outrageously crooked, crooked company. And I, I wish that, that the government or somebody would step in and put a stop to them and other and car- carriers like them. What do you guys are expecting out of this uh, class action lawsuit? And how long do you think I it's have, going to take? I, they haven't communicated enough with us to, to tell us what what we would get. You know, the, every time I've ever been part of a class action lawsuit, I've been involved in two in my life. Uh, one I didn't even know I was involved in, which had something to do with with parts at 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 uh, AutoZone. And I got sent a check for like 50 cents. <laughs> and then a long time ago, I was involved in a class action lawsuit with U.S. Express. And basically, everybody who had applied to work for U.S. Express, they had uh, run your credit. They had run a credit check and then determined on whether or not they were going to hire you depending on your credit. And it turns out that's illegal. Good, man. Uh, double espresso macchiato with extra foam? Sure, that'll be 450 Whoa, 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 whoa. How long ago was that? Because I used to work for U.S. Express. How long ago was that? That was in the mid-2000s. Oh. That was probably 2004, 2005. Okay, I came to U.S. Express in about 2015, at the end of 2014. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, that was long after all that. Yeah, they, they it was another one I didn't even, I never worked for them. I just I applied to work there, you know, back in that time. Whenever I was a newer driver, I was applying to a lot of different places, and I applied there. And uh, they got in trouble for running running people's credit. Sure did. Well, uh, good luck with uh, <laughs> with the uh, super ego. I, I I don't never think that anybody is going to, you know, especially from the government. I, I don't think they're going to step in. At least not yet, anyway. But you know, I, I guess uh, one can hope, I guess. All right, man. Um, so there was a bit story early this year. Uh, what was it? This year, maybe about a couple of months ago. Uh, driver. Uh, I think this was last year. He was just sentenced this year. If if I'm not mistaken, you you can you, you can correct me if if I'm wrong on that. But. Uh, he was, uh, he was being, he was distracted. He caused a crash. A couple of people, uh, in that crash, uh, perished. Um, they came to find out that, um, that he was TikTok and driving. And, um, I noticed myself, you know, that a lot of, a lot of TikTok drivers, uh you know go live a lot i mean more more than usual than than what it used to be on youtube you know a couple of drivers on youtube used to you know go live you know drive and be live and all like that i mean no don't get me wrong i i used to do it you know but i i didn't show myself in the video i always had the camera off but looking at it for me looking at it as a as a safety sake yeah it's still a it's still an issue whether i was you know the camera was on or off because they could still say that i was engaging with the comment session and that's absolutely and that's the big issue right there that a lot of them don't seem to understand that you know you're you're distracted 
regardless if you engage with the comment section because you have to look over, see what the people are saying to actually respond to them. And I actually had I actually had a guy debate this with me in the comment section of that video. Mm. That exact thing. Mm. And this, this is the thing, man. It doesn't matter what you are actually doing. It's not going to matter at all. All it's going to matter to the police, to the FBI, once they have your permanent social media was active on your phone at the time of this accident. Even if it wasn't the driver's fault, you can guarantee that that is going to be used against them. Now, this obviously was this man's fault, 100%. He was doing 68 and 55, you know, way over the speed limit. I don't know if it was construction zone. I don't know what caused the backup. I'm not familiar with that. All I know is that he could have stopped, but he was paying attention to his phone and not paying attention to the highway, and he was speeding. So, I mean, that's, that, that's a bad combination there. And at that time, they didn't even ask for his phone at the beginning of it. He told them that he saw a message on his ELD and he, he had tried to answer it, and that's what caused him to have the accident. Then they asked for his phone after the fact, and they had found that he was not only was he was he on there. Now I never got the part about whether he was scrolling or whether he was live. They never really said that. They just said he was active on TikTok. So it could have been either way, but the fact that he was in social media and that on social media uh that added to it you know that was just another another piece you know they said okay well you're, you were distracted by this that's what caused this but they asked for his phone after the fact and he had tried to hide stuff and they actually got him uh they added to that for something other about trying to tampering with evidence for him trying to delete and hide stuff and forensics at the fbi they're going to find everything on your phone they're going to find out everything you've been doing and uh, and that that added to his charges. That's crazy how they how your personal cell phone can eventually be tampered with evidence. <laughs> oh, yeah. oh yeah, they can actually turn that into a tampering with evidence charge, and it's your own personal phone. Like, bro. Yep. That's crazy. Yep. Your coffee is normally made by Cato. Who the hell is that? Here's what I have to say about it, man. The thing about it is, is that, like I said about him, it didn't matter what he was doing. It didn't matter. It was the fact that his phone was active on social media. There's no way, no matter what anybody says, they can say, I wasn't interacting. It was just facing out. They could say whatever they want to say. Nobody's going to buy into that. A court of the court of law, no judge, no jury is going to say, "Yeah, that was that was facing out, so it wasn't nothing. We that that wasn't a factor." They're not going to go along with that. They're going to say your phone was active on social media, so you was paying attention to your phone, you was not paying attention to the highway, and that was a major factor in the cause of this accident that led to the deaths of people. And that's automatically, no matter what else you got to say, no matter what else factors there might have been, it ain't going to matter. Everything else is going to go out to the out the window. The lawsuits that are looking, the, the, the lawyers and stuff that are looking to gain money from this, which you know they look at us as, as, a, as a big, <laughs> you know, cash win anyway if you have an accident with a semi. That's why there's advertisements everywhere on these billboards. Hey, if you have an accident with a truck, call us. We got you. Because that's what they, they want us, label us as fault anyway. So people that are doing this are setting themselves up. They're setting themselves up. They're not thinking about it. No matter how, how little you think that it is, like no big deal you think that it is, if you get in that situation, even if the accident was caused by the four-wheeler, you're going to be in a, in, a, in a situation in a court of law where they're going to be throwing that in your face. And it's going to be a huge factor with the jury. Guaranteed. Exactly. Exactly. Kentucky trucker, everybody. This uh, increasing uh, uh, states that's putting, you know, more laws in place when it comes to 
social media, cell phone, holding your phone and stuff like that into play. That's when I started to, that's when I started like, mm, yeah, you know, even if the camera's off, let me, let me go ahead and just bat that off and just pre-record my, my thoughts and everything. And then I'll just make an episode out of it. Um, again, these drivers, you know, you, you don't see it as much on YouTube no more, not like you used to, but with the interception of uh, TikTok and everything, you damn near see it every day. And it's more so oh, yeah. from from new drivers that's real, real active on social media. You know, they just think that, hey, you know, I'm I'm bored. I'll just go ahead and jump on live while I'm driving to pass the time. You know, you guys help me get down the road and yada, 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 yada without realizing that, like you said, they they setting themselves up for failure. If anything, if anything, God forsaken should happen to them. The troopers could see it. The DOT could see it. The accident. The lawyers can request your phone records and everything, and they can see it. They can see you can't hide it or nothing like that. You know. So, I, you know, my suggestion. Well, before I give my suggestion, what, what's your suggestion? Because you mentioned it in your TikTok that you suggest that. Uh, that they do what? What I suggest is that people <laughs> don't use any kind of social media while they're driving at all. Don't have no access. When, when you're on drive time, TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, none of that stuff should show active on your phone during the time that you are driving at all. I would not. I would not. Because, like I said, anything you know as well as I do, how many accidents that you see every single day that we're out here? There isn't a day goes by that we don't see an accident. And uh, the possibility of us being involved in an accident is pretty high. Doesn't matter whether it was our fault. We, we could be doing everything perfect, everything exactly legal, everything exactly to the T. That doesn't mean that a car won't come over and hit you. And if your phone has been on social media, they're going to say, oh, well, you, th that car wouldn't hit you if you, you know, you, you could have reacted this out of the other. They're going to find a way to try to blame you. Every day for the last 10 years, Loretta there has been giving me a large black coffee. Today she gives me a large black coffee, only it's got sugar in it. A lot of sugar. I just came back to complain. How you boys put those guns down? If you're going to be in that kind of situation, you don't want them to be able to target you with anything. You don't want them to have no ammo to come at you at all. You want a clean slate. So you don't want nothing, nothing. You don't want to give them nothing. So, you know, and then God forbid that you do happen to glance at something and you miss what's going on ahead of you. And then you slam into somebody and you do cause the accident. And even more, God forbid, that it's a fatality accident like this was. This guy killed five people. It wasn't just one or two. He killed five. Five people. That's a lot. And it was horrific. I mean, stuff blew up, fire. I mean, it was bad. This guy's going to prison. And he's going to prison for quite a while. I don't think there ain't going to be no way around it. And why would anybody want to put them in that situation we're supposed to be professional drivers that we have to conduct ourselves in a professional manner if we want that label then we need to live up to it and if we're going to do that then we got to be responsible for our actions and be smarter to it you're going to see people do dumb stuff in cars you shouldn't see nobody doing that kind of stuff in a truck we should be better than that kentucky trucker everybody Hey man, thanks. I, you know, I appreciate you coming back on and uh, chopping it up and catching up with me, man. Well, no problem. Anytime, man. You know, like I said, a uh, big fan of a uh, big fan of your TikTok. Very well vested in uh in uh in the trucking and the trucking industry. So it's 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 a pleasure talking to you, bro. It was a pleasure talking to you too. Big G's got it locked. Want you to love me all night? Yeah, take me down. Want you to make me real wet? Yeah, swim around. Want you to take it like a G and yeah, I'll make a sound. And I want you to miss me when I'm not around. Come dive in my ocean. Sip on my pool. My love is like lotion. It's all over you. You all over me. Cause you my little boo. How many times I gotta tell you?
Don't fuck around Cause they got you insecure You need your 